Art is too important not to share. Welcome to the Allie and Callie Artcast. Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm not Callie. Oh my God, Mary Lee! It's <laughs> Mary Lee Wallace. I know. I'm so thrilled to be here. I'm sorry, Callie's not here. I know, but, but I'm kind of not because this is fun for me to fill in. I for know, her. and it's great to have you here. Yeah, but okay, so Callie, let's talk about her since she's not here. Yes. Okay. She got called in at the last minute to do Mamma Mia. With the Summer Theater? Yes, with the Summer, summer theater. theater. Yes, the show opens on Friday. Okay. And she is she has played Rosie, the character Rosie, before. She's got a lead. Oh, yeah. exciting. I saw a photo of the two of all three of the leads right. um, on Facebook, and the costumes that they have this year are amazing. Okay, so the costumes for Mamma Mia, regardless, when they do the singing, is so much fun because they wear, first of all, platform shoes. Right. 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 So, little cat. Allie, her and I are almost the same. She's a little bit shorter than I am, but I'm shrinking. As I'm getting older, I'm starting yeah, to shrink. So I I'm hear starting to happens. wear those. Those platforms are looking pretty good to me. Wow. So, yeah, the, the character and in I'm Mama tall, Mia, and I hate wearing, I hate wearing heels, even. Yeah? Yeah. I think if you put on those platform shoes to Mama Mia, you'd feel pretty cool. I got a funny story about platform okay, shoes. Okay, I'm, I'm all in. When I was a teenager mm-hmm. in high school... Um, my mom stupidly gave me her credit card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, is that what happened when I took it out of my mom's wallet? I, she gave it to me? No, she how, actually gave it oh, to she gave me it to, to, oh, to buy our, our something in particular. Okay. Okay. And I saw a pair of platform shoes. Yeah. I had to buy them. I just had to have them. Oh, my gosh. She never lent me her credit card again. <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble, but I love those shoes. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. In fact, um, just I know this will come out after the this little event, um, but the Wine, Women, and Shoes that happens every every year yes. is a fundraiser for a different nonprofit than mm-hmm. the, the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance. But right. um, it's um, th- Thursday night, oh. and I have platform shoes. I'm going to be wearing they're purple. Oh, they're how purple fun. velvet. Oh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It. So, Yay. yeah. So, anyway, I am excited to be here as mm-hmm. a board member. I always feel like I have to listen to this podcast. Right. So, when I initially, when we initially started doing this as an organization, I listened and I and I, I fell in love with this podcast. You guys are so much fun. You are so sweet. Oh, I look to forward say so. to it. My mom's. <laughs> I live in Coeur d'Alene. Mom lives in Spokane on the South Hill, and literally when I'm. Right after the podcast airs, I put that sucker in. It's like a good time to go visit mom. And I listened to half of it on the way and half it on the way back. And uh, congratulations. What a fun podcast. Thanks. So I'm thrilled to be here. Yay. And yeah. I want to also mention that Mary Lee is one of our sponsors this year. I am. You t- you, you got money out of me. Yeah. You did. North but Idaho. it's not Alliance. a lot. So hey, out there, you guys listening, it's not a lot of money. Go ahead and sponsor and be on. This is growing. This it is, is getting growing. a big audience. Yeah. Ugh. So get in while the well, get in get in while the dirt's cheap. Right. This thing's gonna go up. Well, we are here at the Jack, which is in Post Falls. It's the Jacqueline Arts and Culture Center. It is so cool. It is really cool. It's yeah. an old church yeah. that was converted to an arts and culture center mm-hmm. many years ago. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it is I think beautiful. it's a secret. A lot of people don't know about this facility, this venue, and it shouldn't be a secret because right. it is so awesome. Um, the performing area, the art gallery, um, even where we're sitting right now. In the, the kitchen. In the kitchen. What we a fun place in the for kitchen. women to be sitting, right? Exactly. So here we are sitting in the kitchen with Sandra Marlowe and Gay Kruger Ribble. Ribble. Hi, lady. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Why are you supposed to be sitting right in the kitchen? I'm Women here. always gather in the kitchen. They we do. Always. Isn't that kind of a classic I mean, thing? we do. Huh? Well, I'm excited about your upcoming show. It's called What She Said, A Feminine Perspective. And it will be July 16th here at the Jacqueline Arts and Culture Center. Right and here. And yeah. the doors open at 630. Tickets are $25 each. And there are are five 
amazing women in the show. Divas. You guys are called divas. Divas in the best possible way. Yes. I love it because Sandra is the jazz diva and Gay is the Broadway diva. And we've got three others. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, first of all, how this show came about? Well, that would really be kind of your... That would probably be my my territory. Um, Actually, I've had the idea for a while. I'm a a jazz vocalist and I've done... And you're good too, by the Mm -hmm. way. I well, jumped online you. and looked you up because I'm like, okay, I'm thank the fill in interviewee <laughs> and I want to be prepared. <laughs> you did and your so homework. I right? did my homework. Yay. Well, you thank you. are good. You have a oh, sweet, yes, she is. rich <laughs> voice. Thank mm. you so much. Yes. So I um, have done a number of jazz festivals, and a few years back, I did one in um, Southern California. I think it was Big Bear. It's a lake, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and we had what was called a diva night, Ooh. which was a lot of the women who were, um, you know, came obviously with bands and whatever, but it was strictly just the women, a lineup of female vocalists. And in this case, it was primarily jazz, but it was an extremely popular, fun, lively uh, event. The house was packed. And so I had um, taken that idea when I was um, on the board of directors for an arts organization at a place where I lived previous. Um, And we had a great success with it as a fundraiser. We did both a diva night and a devo night, and then we put the two together. What's Um, a devo night? Oh, that was the the guys. Yeah, yeah. The the diva devo. (laughs) And um, it was a great, you know, it was really built um, sponsorship. It was a little bit competitive, a little bit, you know, sexy, funny. Mm. And so it was really successful. So um, I had the uh, idea that we would do something like that possibly here. And so I contacted Darla because I've done a show here at the Jack, which Mm -hmm. is just, they're really wonderful to work with. And so we were tossing around ideas and we decided on a date. And this is funny because often this happens to me. I come up with the title and the idea, the concept, get the date. And I'm like, oh crap, now we have to write a show. (laughs) Now we actually, we need to see if people are available for the date. And who is it? And and who's in it? But I had my, my, my list of people. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I had met Gay at an event, uh, a summer picnic yes. last year, yeah. and we started talking about music and theater and arts and really hit it off and had a um, nice connection. And so she, she was kind of in my little checklist Your in Rolodex. the back of my head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I contacted Gay and I knew there were, um, I have a student, Melody Harrison, Melody Harrison, who is a just a very interesting singer songwriter, young gal. I knew that I wanted to see if she was available. Ooh, she okay, does kind of a pop, alternative, um, interesting, interesting, mostly original stuff. And I have a good friend, Robin Hamby, who is a country blues kind of amazing, distinctive voice. And I w- knew that I wanted her to be in it because I was looking for. Um, a diversity mm-hmm, sure. of not only um, women and their voices, different types of voices, different types of music, but women who perhaps had different perspectives and different life experience as well. Right. And then I had seen Carol Davis downtown in Coeur d'Alene at Studio Studio 107. I 107. met her there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I just was charmed by her. She has a wonderful and voice. And she does blues, right? She's kind of, okay. yeah, she, well, she does a lot of things, but blues definitely she has that kind that, of timbre to her voice. Okay. Yeah. So as it turned out, everyone was on board. And then the challenge was to find, I wanted to keep our band all female as well. Because I wanted it to oh. really represent women, women's experiences, women's voices. I dig this so much. Yeah, women like, as the instrumentalists so awesome. as yeah. well. So um, it just worked out. So we have three wonderful young musicians. Uh, Kim uh, Pl- Plevniak, she s- plays with CDA Symphony. Amazing bass player um, and Spokane Symphony. A young woman who I had not met, Beth Rainey, who has done a lot of theater and accompanying and music directing. So she is our pianist. Mm -hmm. And then we have a young, just out of Whitworth College, young gal named Sophia Johnson, who is an amazing percussionist. Wow. And she was available. So we were able to put this together and the rehearsals worked. And, you know, so we've been... Putting it together for everybody. It's fabulous. It's, it's going to be a great so show. Fun. When you think about the decades, we have from 20s to mm-hmm. 70s. Wow. So we're talking about a feminine perspective and how it changes. 
Right. Sure. It changes through your life experience. It changes through your point of view. And and what we've been doing is we've been crafting the show in a way that is musical, but also it's it, it's poignant. It's fun. Just making little comments along the way, and mm-hmm. I, we take you for a ride. Oh, that's yeah. great. Wait a second. There's only one performance. This could go on. I, I know. Go on. I know. Gosh. Okay. But who knows what will happen after exactly. we're, we're, we keep We keep getting ideas for other sure. things and we go, oh, that's the next show. Mm-hmm. So we're already yeah. planning the next yeah. show. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we found, have visions. We, mm-hmm. we found that this partnership is a really good one. Um, we really defer to each other's strengths. Mm-hmm. Um, we've become really good friends. And I'm pretty new to the area. So I've been looking for friends. I've been looking for this kind of experience. Mm -hmm. So I found it very um, synchronistic that this all happened. I feel like I manifested this in some wonderful, of delightful course. way. Sure. Right. That's how it all works. Yeah. You know yeah. that. It's oh. so yeah. it's it's so great. And well, I, I the love gals the, the gals are fabulous. Oh I can't they're wait. fabulous. I mean there's uh, uh, everyone says, you know, oh, you know, you're coming from, you know, showbiz in Los Angeles and, and so forth, you know, how's the talent here? I said, top notch. Hey, y'all. It's Jason from Tubbs Coffee Roasters. We are North Idaho's specialty coffee roaster. We are homegrown and we are local. We love coffee and we love our community, especially Allie and Callie in ArtCast. We have a retail space in our roastery in Hayden, and we can also be found on the shelves at Super One and Yolks. And if you like to buy coffee online, we do offer subscriptions. You can find us at TubbsCoffeeRoasters.com. Support arts and culture and your local roaster. That's all. So, Gay, so, tell us about your background, where you're from and your family. And you have a pretty interesting in. story. I'm Ooh, kind of excited. Does. Thank you. For everybody to hear. Well, okay. So, the showbiz family. And okay. when, when you say that, you go, okay, what exactly does that mean? Mm-hmm. It's literally everybody in the family is in some aspect of show business. My uh, grandfather was a matinee idol on Broadway and a movie star. He married the gal who was starring in the show across the street from him. So both okay, on so Broadway. Okay, so movie star, would we know the name? Well, remember, it's my grandfather and I'm in my 70s. Okay. So, <laughs> that's no, but that's, you know. So if you watch old movies, sure. he's been in over 300 of them. Oh, wow. His name is Otto Kruger. Otto Kruger, and okay. uh, you would know him. Uh, probably most famous films would be High Noon. Okay, High Noon. Okay, yeah. the judge in High Noon who marries them and tells him to get out of town and all that. That's your grandfather. That's my grandfather get out of here. Okay, um, Cover Girl with Gene Kelly. Oh, yeah. So, so look him up. As soon as you see the picture of his face you say oh my goodness yes i love him he's great also he did a lot of horror films which was kind of fun fun. um and um my mother was on broadway she was also on broadway with her dad in four different shows which was pretty awesome she met and married my dad my dad uh became an award-winning cinematographer oh and and the film that most people know is the best Star Trek, Star Trek Two: Wrath okay. of Khan. Oh, oh Rath- yes, yes. That was my yes. Name. Oh, oh, what is the guy? Ma- 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 um, Montablanc. What's yeah. His- yeah, Ricardo Montalban. Ricardo Montalban. Oh man, but he oh, was in man. the TV show, not the movie. No, no, no. The, the he movie. was in the movie. Was, the movie. Yeah. No, he was in that. He movie. was in the movie. Right, I do remember him. Yes, and yes. everything. Oh yeah. Yes. I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, I was on the set every day, so yes. Oh wow. You deserve to say, say that. that. Oh, he okay. was all of that in was person. He? Oh, oh how yeah. Fun. He was fabulous. Oh. And that but was your part father. Of so was my this, he was the cinematographer on, on that, that movie. on that movie. Okay. And then um, my sister Dee Dee mm-hmm. is still acting, mm-hmm. and um, now she's done a lot of great things. But the thing that everybody always talks about is she's the bus driver at the end of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> Bueller. Bueller. Because that's such a classic moment, it and is. it's very early on in her career. But you know, it's something everybody knows, right? Which is really fun. Oh, that's fun. And I've 
another um, sister, Debbie, who didn't go the same oh. route, but she's a wonderful artist. Oh. Um, she, painting, and um, uh, she also has now gotten into photography. Um, and she's she actually had a little acting school with kids for a while. So, it, you know, kind of didn't fall far from so the tree. So when you say your yeah. family yeah. A, is in... in- theater and acting definitely it's definitely everybody yeah so i think when before we came down to the the kitchen here you were telling me that your husband you met him and he's a farmer because you wanted you thought that was normal americana well he grew up on a farm i don't think he would ever call himself a farmer oh, okay <laughs> okay all right all right <laughs> okay he's he's actually an author and a motivational speaker but he grew up on a farm so he has this wonderful midwest values and when we yeah. met I thought, oh my goodness, this is this is somebody who lived in a small town. This is our town. I, you know, the yeah. the, the play, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh, I want to know everything about this. I finally did go back um, to um, Fairmount, Indiana, which is also the home of James Dean. Oh, so about every other year we go back for James Dean days. Which, oh, fun! By the way, you should do that one time. It's super fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. even I know bet. there was a James Dean day. Well, now we know. Yeah, we yeah. Know. now we you know. Yet. And if and and if you're listening and you don't know who James Dean is, please sorry, look, please oh. look him up. Yeah, so, yeah Ricardo is. <laughs> oh my but goodness, he's like oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, you do that. Real, you do that really. I well. mean, who doesn't know the song James Dean? James Dean. James, James Dean. Dean. Yeah. I, anyway, <laughs> yeah, we're all raising our hand over on this side. <laughs> That's funny. So, so yeah, I came by it very honestly. I always wanted to be in musicals. I and I, mm. f- since I was sure. a little girl, I was I I had the privilege of being able to go see a lot of Broadway musicals because I lived on the East mm-hmm. Coast. Mm-hmm. And then you know, one day I'm you know I've gone to fame school. I've gone to acting school. I'm now in New York. I'm in Manhattan and I am, you know, walking the streets, going to auditions, you know, and and I kept, I kept getting jobs. I would get a lot of television commercials and then I got a stage show and they sent me out of town. And then I auditioned again. I got a stage show and they sent me out of town. Sure. And then one time I finished a show, it was in, at the Civic Light Opera in Orlando, Florida. And it was a wonderful show called Where's Charlie? I played Amy and um, uh, the lead. And uh, we finished the show. I didn't have any place to go. I had let my apartment go in New York. And I decided I was going to go back to see my mom in California. And my little sister found an, um, an ad for a new theater and they were going to do Little Mary Sunshine. And I thought, oh, oh I think I'll audition for that. I didn't really know the show, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I, I auditioned for it. I got it. Wow. And that started my career in California because every time I did a, a stage show, the casting directors come, the producers come. It's, it's, like, a, it's very well supported at, yeah. that, at that time in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And I kept getting television shows. So it, it was pretty phenomenal. So I said, oh, I guess I found my place. Mm-hmm. And um, I did some original musicals. There's an original cast album that, that you can actually download of me from the Great American Backstage Musical. Is that right? It's a darling show. It's a kind of send up of all the movie musicals. So it's a little like Cover Girl. Okay. It's a it's a, it's it's kind of a a Gene Kelly, Rita Hayworth, Phil Silvers kind of send so up. So you know how to tap. I do. Aha. I do. Okay, so you need to join me at the Croc Center. We've got a little tap group oh, that, that's that fun. taps. <laughs> that's and fun. some of us just aren't as good as the others. And so I'm that one. But I bought really <laughs> expensive tap shoes because I thought, listen, if I buy expensive tap shoes, I'm going to sound better. Mm-mm. No, I'm going to tell you a secret. <laughs> Let me tell you a secret of how to sound better. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm all ears. You need to have tap shoes that don't have heels. You need to be in the flat tap shoes like the guys wear. That's oh. where you get all the sound. Okay. The sound doesn't come out of the of the regular heels. When I was doing shows, I couldn't make all those sounds because they wanted me in it's, the high and yeah. the high heels. Yeah, and right? so that you, know, you want your legs to look good and so forth. So they'd put the dancers behind me 
and I would just, you know, make all the moves happen, yeah. and they'd make all the sound. <laughs> that's oh, not funny. funny. Yeah, I'm but a mock. Really I'm what's called a mock tapper. Oh, that's there the you go. I am a mock tapper. Yep. I can look good, and the arms and the smile is all there. But don't listen to what's going on with the feet. It's not your fault. It's It's not your fault. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 very difficult to make those sounds with with heels. If you notice some of the best female load off, I've got to tell you, Gay, because I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) would you come tap with us anytime? Hey, I can come tap. I'm actually a tapping jazz singer. I took two (gasps) years of tap. Really? I don't do it during my jazz shows, but yeah, I'm a tapper. See, we're twins. That's it, guys. You want to take tap with us, Allie? I will show you my. My tapping skills okay and you'll all go what it's really good exercise <laughs> it's really it is yeah really good it's exercise. very good exercise oh oh gay, well, that is i know um gay you were in uh mr mom <laughs> and i do love that movie because i love michael keaton um and you have a michael keaton story that i just thought was so amusing that oh, maybe you, you just need to share it okay so the michael keaton story so this is um uh Mr. Mom was uh, directed by Stan Dragati. And Stan Dragati is this wonderful director. We hadn't done a film in about five years. He'd done a lot of television commercials. And I was one of the actors that was privileged to do these television commercials. I think in, in five years, we probably did over a dozen national television commercials. So we were called the Dragati Players. Oh. And we all knew each other. Okay. Now, if you go back and watch the movie... You'll see there are a whole bunch of really small little parts with actors that you've seen on commercials all the time. Those were the Dragati players. Oh, huh? funny. So what he did is he personally called all of us and he said, I'm going to do a movie. I want you in it. I have no idea what part, but would you do it? Sure. So we all said, sure, of course. Yeah. So we thought it was a little movie. We oh, didn't blockbuster. You know, we didn't think it was going to be a big deal. Sure. So the first day of shooting, I was going to to be working, and it was Michael Keaton's first day. But I had a third callback for a very important part, and since I knew everybody, I knew I knew the crew. I knew the makeup people because sure. mm-hmm. we had worked together for five years, knew their names, knew mine, and so forth. And I said, would it be okay if we shot me first? They went, oh, no problem. We'll get you out in plenty of time. So they're lighting me. They're putting the you know makeup on me and so forth. Michael Keaton's standing around like a sh- <laughs> some star of the movie. It's like, so okay. instead of Mr. Mom, he's Mr. Nobody <laughs> standing around. He goes, who is this woman? <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, I don't even think I had a name of my character. I was the um, <laughs> sort of nasty receptionist when he goes for a job. That's right. And and they they film me and so forth. And it was it got to be kind of funny because he was really playing it up. And apparently sure. he told the story on The Tonight Show. Oh, funny. Yeah, he didn't use my name because he didn't remember it. Right. Sure. <laughs> and, funny. and then um, it was about, I would say, a dozen years later, I ran into him and his family at a haunted house. And I just went up to him. I didn't, I figured he wouldn't remember sure. me, but I just went up to him. I said, Oh, hi, Michael. You know, we, we worked together once. He said, Oh my goodness, Mr. Mom. <gasps> You're that gal. <laughs> he said, I talk about you all the time. You're that gal. <laughs> I, I show up in my stretch limo. Yeah. With my <laughs> movie I, star. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. On but and, nope, nope. It was that girl who, who they knew her name. I didn't oh, know anybody's name. She knew everyone's oh, name. So it was kind of cute. That, that is cute. That's really good. I did. Yep, you did. <laughs> I did. That's cute. Well, oh. let's go to Sandra. Let's Sandra, Sandra. Sandra. If you have been doing a lot, um, you are an amazing singer and you, you. also teach voice. I do teach voice. Why don't you voice. tell us a little bit more know, about no, no. you? Can you sing it for us? Because <laughs> <laughs> this woman has an amazing voice. Like I, I told know. you, I did some of the research and I um, went on to Apple Music and there you are. I have. You are yes. right there with an album. You have to remind me the name of the, of the album that you have there. Well, the last release was called The Heart Always Remembers. The Heart Always Remembers. Which That's is... what I was listening to. Mm-hmm. And ooh, sultry. Thank beautiful you. Beautiful Thank voice. you. And that's actually the title track is also that, which is a song I wrote. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. And sing with one of the ladies who okay. is going to be in the show, Robin Hamby. Robin. Oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. 
So, and she started out actually, we met, uh, she was one of my students. Oh. When I was um, living south of Boise. <laughs> it's okay to say. <laughs> well, originally, I. We're in a kitchen. We're in a kitchen. It's Wait safe. Wait, is that what you have to say? You have to say south of Boise? South of Boise. No, you I didn't so know that. I didn't that. know. Oh, okay. You know, and you, everybody, it's okay. It is really okay. That's the code, it's, it's, dear. It works oh, out okay. That's the code. I'll, oh, I'll But never actually, say it again. I, I originated um, in North Dakota. Oh. So I'm kind of probably closer to where Dave and his values and all of that, sure. uh, but ended up in California for many, many years. Um, um, went through, um, oh my goodness, I actually worked in aerospace. That was my daytime job, uh, but sang all through my 20s. Don't tell 30s. me you're an astronaut. No, I'm not an okay. astronaut. <laughs> Singing astronaut. No, but I'm just, you know, I'm a spy, but we okay. won't talk about well, we, yeah, yeah. Well, we weren't going to talk about that. We didn't say that's why people come to North Idaho, because they're spies. If they're hiding out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Anyway, so much of my early training was um, surprisingly opera, but and you probably will hear a little bit of that occasionally, the range sure. that I do. Didn't find that that was where my heart really was, although I love the form and I love the discipline of that. Mm -hmm. um, but And was with Opera San Jose for a couple of years. Before it was Opera San Jose, it was okay. actually San Jose Opera Community Theater. Oh. Um, and... Uh, moved into doing more pop and bands, but my heart always, I think, was in jazz. In fact, I remember as a kid, we had an old, I grew up in a train depot. My father was a okay. railroad agent. You need to stop there and explain that a little more I detail. know. It okay. sounds, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I grew up in a train depot. Da, 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 da. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> There's a what story the in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> My father was a railroad agent for the Sioux Line Railroad, which was a Midwestern, North kind of Northern Railroad. And we actually lived, there was an apartment on the second floor. So the first floor obviously was the waiting room, the office, sure. the uh, warehouse, whatever. And then there was a stairway that went up. So I grew up in a, um, in the apartment in the depot, which people, it's funny because I've, um, often told stories about this kind of interesting upbringing. And the other person who uh, actually, interestingly enough, grew up, um, her dad was a railroad agent, was Peggy Lee. Oh, really? And she was from North Dakota. They oh. have an entire, um, I think, where she grew up. They've made huh. a historic museum of the depot where she lived or her father worked or whatever. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. But <clears throat> we... Um, um, and so most of the music I actually did with my family was um, gospel, and sure. I was a member of a little, like a little kind of, I don't know what you would call it, church, um, I, like almost like a little country church. Sure. And that was my early, um, early background. And piano, I studied piano, and I kind of forgot where I was going with that. But anyway, um, yeah, I know, this happens a lot. That's all right. I'm past the hot flashes, but... <laughs> I got to stop people. It happens to me all the time. I'm just curious. It's and kind of like walking into a room in your brain and some part of you went elsewhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, anyway, so... Um, the the California experience was just, um, you know, making a living, oh, which sure. wasn't in music, but the railroad was, um, I, that's where it started, the yeah. railroad. So, yeah. yes, the stories I tell about that, people always ask me, um, well, how old are you? Because they think, you know, I mean, we did not have running water. We did not, we bathed in a galvanized tub. Wow. And we usually did it maybe Saturday nights and in between we did little wash ups. I mean, you know, they That's think, right. I, I'm thinking, oh, man, you look really good for your age. <laughs> Oh my did God! Did somebody live this back then? way? Not right. In your seventies anymore? Not that. Yeah, God, you look great. Oh, you look amazing. Well, I'm not in my seventies, but a, I'm in. I am. She's a, you are in your seventies. Yes, 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 and I'm in my sixties. Very early sixties, actually. Very early seventies, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they'll never know. They'll never I'm know. I'm not even going to tell you where I'm at. <laughs> That's right. Because I don't believe it. I just that's good. I yeah, that's it. good. You know, my mother who um, passed away at 97 a few years ago, she always said, you know, she goes, I look in the mirror and I go, God, where did this old woman come from? Sure. Because on the inside, she goes, I'm still 19. Mm -hmm. My mom's and that's 93 this year. And she said, she? Oh, Marilee, I'm finally just starting to feel my age a little bit. Just a little bit. 
just a little bit. I'm like, wow. God bless you, mom. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And people are living longer. Anyway, we digress. But so moving to California, I got very involved in music, had a day job in aerospace sure. for many, many years. Um, gravitated towards jazz. I remember as a kid in the train depot, mm -hmm. we had a little old upright piano and I would sit there and sing and I had no exposure to jazz and what that was, that whole kind of genre and mm -hmm. structure. But when I look back now, that's what I was singing and mm. what I was doing. So that was the natural flow that Come I on, it had. had to start with, pardon me, boy. Is that the tap new choo-choo? It had to. You had to be like one of your first that. songs. I have sung that. I and bet you have. I was with a big band for 10 years, and we did all big band swing. And so we had uh, three vocalists, a guy and myself and another gal, and we did a lot of that. Tuxedo Junction, all the mm. great old um, big band swings mm -hmm. things. So anyway, that's how I gravitated towards jazz. And actually, T Teaching came out of the fact that I was performing a lot and I was very visible because I never thought I would teach. Mm -hmm. um, it's a much different thrust than the performing and it's a different, um, it's a different reward too, which was interesting. I had to find that out. But people were seeking me out. They said, do you teach? Do you mm -hmm. teach? Oh my gosh, we really want you to teach. So I had a friend who owned a music academy and she said, I really need a voice teacher. So that's how I got into it. And then my reputation spread and I have people people fly in occasionally to take sessions with me. Everything from, you know, uh, young high school, college age to young aspiring professionals. Um, and I teach pretty much everything. I would say my bent is not opera, although that's my background. And sure. I incorporate a little bit of the techniques from that. But most of the people I get are musical theater, mm. um, some jazz, contemporary pop. Um, and actually, surprisingly, I get quite a few retirees who maybe didn't have a career like me. <laughs> Hey ladies, have you heard about Nia yet? Hi, I'm Marilee Wallace. I'm a proud board member of the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance and owner of Nia. That's short for the North Idaho Alliance. We specialize in leadership development specifically focused in connecting women to programs and workshops and the network to educate, empower, and enrich their lives. Our goal is to make positive impacts in our community while helping other women in North Idaho succeed. Next up is our Women of Impact Leadership Roundtable Series and our Women with Cool Jobs event. Those are both kicking off in the fall, so I hope you'll look us up. You can find us on Facebook at Women of Impact CDA or just give us a call at 208-660-1557. Go out and make it an impactful day. Okay. So what she said at the Jack, that is on Saturday, July 16th. Um, tickets are on sale right now. So, And where can they get tickets? Simple Ticks has the, the link. Actually, they can go to the Jacqueline Arts and Cultural Center website, which will link them to Simple Ticks. But actually, you can just run a search on Google that says Simple Ticks, what she said. Okay. We'll take them right to the tickets and mm -hmm. I would say get them now because get them now. we're selling out. We've sold oh, you'll a sell lot. Out. I mean, absolutely. This, yeah, that's this the is, plan, right? <laughs> <laughs> or we can obtain from a cast member. It says right there on the flyer, Allie, we better get our tickets I actually right have now. Some, I have some in my purse. What a sales show. <laughs> nice. What a sales <laughs> when we're girl. Done. Speaking of sales Good. girls, can we back up just a second? Because you ran a business Oh, in I, sales mm -hmm. that kind of started small and took off really large, right? Can we go back to that a little bit, Gay? Yeah. Well, I, and I still run it. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> oh, and look, so what is it? What news, can we <laughs> news. <laughs> it's a promotion business. Yeah, it's a promotional marketing uh, business. I've been doing it for over 40 years. In fact, it, it's how I met my husband, and then, and then he came – uh, into the business with me. Mm -hmm. So um, basically what, what we do is we help companies to e e extend their brand using promotional products and um, tell their story. Sure. We, we decided, I, yeah, I mean, I, I was working with the studios for a long time. So okay. I did a lot of the on packs when there were, were um, the videos. So remember, remember Blockbuster, the video mm -hmm. store? Mm -hmm. I do. So, so, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So the, when you would see videos that had on packs, it was probably likely that 
I did it. So the okay. little gifts that were on it. Okay. Like mm-hmm. the gummy worms so, yeah. or the oh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. The, to- the toys. The oh, little toys. Oh, okay. The toys. Okay. okay. So I did a lot of those. I worked a lot with Universal and Warner Brothers. I also did a lot with the... Um, 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 Capitol Records okay. and, War- and Warner Brothers Records. Um, uh, I, I'm actually really proud of this. I did, I did the 30th anniversary um, commemorative for the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts wow. Club Band. And um, I, it had to be sanctioned by the surviving be- Beatles. Mm-hmm. And we had a, a, a meeting with all the executives and they had the oh, post- you didn't get to posters meet with there. The actual no, oh, no, no. I did. That's a bucket list thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but what I created was, if you look at the picture of them in the outfits they were wearing, they all had kind of these medallions that were pins that were on their costumes. On their like, jackets. Like, on yeah. their jackets. Uh-huh. Yeah. So... I recreated that with 30th anniversary. You could actually, um, if you Google it, 30th 30th anniversary medallion, sometimes they're out there. Uh The highest price that I've seen for them um, has been over seven hundred dollars. Wow! Which Holy is, which moly! Is, yeah. You probably have a shoebox in your closet, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to end up on eBay. <laughs> if, if the acting and promotional thing doesn't work out, that's my retirement. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought you were never retiring. Uh, Jay. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know what retiring is because right. I think that's partially what. What keeps me young, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, sure. you know, and I wasn't expecting that I was going to come back to acting. I mean, I had been retired for 30 years. Mm-hmm. I had this moment where, because the promotional marketing was my side hustle <laughs> while I was acting. Because, right. you, you know, you don't, you don't work all the it's time. It's paycheck to paycheck. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so. Music as well. Yeah. So yeah, I was, thing. I was talking to a vendor on the phone and I'm reading the script for um, a commercial and, and I've got a problem and I've got to, you know, do the script and go in and find, I said, oh, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with the acting. Done acting for a while. And yeah. so I kind of said goodbye to the acting and I thought, okay, well, you know, that's it. And I'll come back when I'm a golden girl. Sure. Sure. <laughs> ding, I'm kind ding, of ding, ding. past the Golden Girl stage. <laughs> no, you're but not. But we're calling it we're calling it no it's now. Right. And and so this is such a gift. I mean, I was saying to the girls the other day, it was I mean, I got emotional. We were having a rehearsal and I had a flash of of all the rehearsals I've ever had in my mm-hmm. entire career, mm-hmm. they all flash in front of me, you know, kind of like that life review just before <laughs> you're going to die. <laughs> uh, luckily, I didn't die. Yeah, but but say, oh. the life review was happening, but it was all the auditions and all of the rehearsals. And I, I saw the faces and I heard the songs like in a flash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I just turned to everybody and I said, this is such a blessing in my life. Thank you so much. I never expected this to happen again. And I'm so grateful. It's a place in your heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, this thing that we're all doing here is is passion. It's what's in our hearts. Yes. Singing, acting, yeah. mock, tap dancing. It's all, and, Fake and Allie <laughs> is a beautiful <laughs> artist and, and her family. It's, it's, it's our passion. Do you and know that I used to sing in a jazz band? <gasps> Oh, Ooh. no. Okay. Come on. Hit now me. you're talking. Go ahead talking. and throw True something out there. Give me a song. Okay. Da-da-da-da-da. My analyst told me that I was right out of my head. He said I need treatment, but I'm not that easily led. I love it. I, that was <laughs> awesome. I hear style. I hear style. <laughs> we we have another show that will be coming up. We'll yes. be calling you. Wow. <laughs> Can Allie and I, I be in like it? The, we'll just be the, I don't know what we'll be. We'll be the understudies. We'll be the... I want a more important title, though. Yeah, I don't want to be the There's no, the there's, there's <laughs> there's no understudy. She, yeah. The show must go on. The That's show right. must go That's on. Right. So That's right. That's right. With Marilee and not Callie today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's in... Yeah. She's in, yeah. I know. Okay. She is... I really wish that you both could have met her. Uh, you probably I've have met, met her, Callie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen her on stage uh-huh. um, a couple years ago. Yeah. Actually, actually it was here at the Jack. She oh, was yeah. doing a show. She did the uh, Wonderettes. 
Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Uh-huh. And then she That's came delightful. back and did the second version of the, the uh, when they do the next decade. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I, I have a feeling nice that I am going to meet her. I have a feeling. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> she is dynamic and yeah. she's quite a performer. She, she just she's one of those who can just pick it up and you go, mm-hmm. wow. She hits the mark most every. I think that's pretty. Time. I think that's pretty exciting that she's she's going into a show on Friday, right? With yes. platform shoes. Yeah, Fortunately, <laughs> has yeah. done it before. So Fortunately, that yes. Yeah. Um, it's it's but, kind of the actor's nightmare, you know, where you where you say, "Oh, but I don't know the music. Yeah. I don't know the routines. But can you do it? I'll try." Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's it's something that. When you do get an opportunity to do it, it's like that hero's journey. Can I do it? Mm -hmm. And I have had the opportunity to go into a show where, you know, basically the night before they say, can you cover for somebody? Mm -hmm. I've only seen the show once. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did it for a children's show. I had the time of my life. Wow. They I, they gave me this beautiful book like I was carrying around a, a book, but it was actually the script. I didn't know where to go. Everybody just followed me. I just made <laughs> stuff up. Sure. And it was so it was much magical, fun. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was, it was fun. great. <laughs> it was great. I did I did it for two weeks. I finally got the hang of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the first one was the most fun because it was kind of like ad lib that doesn't matter right but sure. you know i think that has to do with any kind of performing i think we're a little bit adrenaline junkies sure mm-hmm. I, I, would I would agree being on the stage I would agree. there's that i mean i've had moments in fact i had one not long ago and it was really funny i was singing with a symphony and uh, and the house was packed we had almost sold it out and i'm thinking whoo this is heady and i'm standing backstage before they before the conductor walked on and then i was the guest artist or whatever and i had to lead off with the tune total blank in my brain i'm like whoops what is the first word to my song and i go tony what's the first he goes oh you'll be fine and he walks out and by the time (laughs) i got to that first word (laughs) i got and then you were fine and there they go the strings and there and i thought oh yeah there it is you know but there's that split second of like (laughs) total panic where you're like and sometimes I, but you know what? It's really funny is I have found with audiences, live audiences, because I interact a lot in my shows with um, with the audience, which is not always true with um, staged theatrical productions. Sure. But um, mm-hmm. um, if I share, I can get away with just about anything with an audience if they don't see you sweat. Sure. I have flubbed lines. I have... I literally dragged toilet paper up on my shoe onto the stage. <laughs> I said, it's not indicative of our set today, you know, um, and the audience, if they don't think you're nervous, they're good. Right. If you sure. can handle whatever it is. So honestly, you learn just, I mean, I can function when I'm panicked. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's the adrenaline that probably goes across the board for a lot of performers. And I think right. that that's important for, um, young performers or new performers when they have that fear that stage fright they mm-hmm. they know they want to do it but they have that stage fright sure it's it's go out and do it anyway sure. mm-hmm. because you'll you'll find that it's really much easier than you thought you'll find that the audience just wants you to be wonderful mm-hmm. and you can talk to that audience you have a relationship with them sure. that is yep. very intimate in this in this setting so if something goes wrong you know you say it's hey, okay we're gonna fix this yeah right mm-hmm. you know find the key do the you know, yeah find I, the I, word, I always like to tell people when yeah. i'm doing the, you know a, a, an event or leading a, a program i'm just like we're everybody's a goofball Every one of us sitting here is a goofball. So just roll with it. Oh, you know, yeah. just who was it? Wasn't it Carnegie, Andrew Car- Was it that said, I don't know, some motivational person said, just imagine your entire audience is naked. Hi, Allie here. Hey, do you love our art cast? Be sure to follow us on your favorite podcast app or like us on Facebook to get notifications about some upcoming giveaways, like an official Allie and Callie mug. Our audience is growing too, and we are a great outlet for advertising. Consider being a sponsor and Callie and I will record an ad for you or help you record it yourself. Thank you for listening. But you know, I love your comment about 
the young performer thing and this is I'm going to throw a little teaser out there yes. Gay and I are in the process of talking about possibly a series of workshops oh. bringing both of our kind of fortes um, you know to the to bear for young mm-hmm. performers so we'll see how that changes. I love that I, yeah, yeah. I love that too Yeah, I love it cool. and I'm just going to steal these ladies from you guys because um, you know I have Nia my right. North Out Ohio Alliance which is specifically a women's leadership development company sweet mm-hmm. and we just focus on a plethora of different topics that just engage women um, give different perspectives and I would be delighted to have you guys as part of a workshop that would be or, or me awesome. part of your workshop just mm-hmm. as long as I can bring my tap shoes. <laughs> okay. There, I, I love that. And it's I love, yeah. And I love that, that you said that you don't sing. I would like to challenge you on that. <laughs> oh, so yes. what, because e- I can sing talk just like the that, mock tap. Shoes. Exactly. I can, exactly. I can mock tap and I can, I can sing talk because I can mm-hmm. find you a song that you will feel so comfortable with. Ooh. And and she'll be able to help you. Sure. So so okay, you'll, you'll, do, you'll do. You'll do. I'm up more for it. I'm that. a little nervous, but let's I do actually, it. Actually, we yeah. might have to. We might have to expand this yeah. not just to young well, people because yeah. currently I actually have a student who came to me saying I really cannot sing. Sure. And he's. 71 I think so I Never love had. that and he you is know, now we are hit that I have hit that mid 50s age where I'm just like I just want to try stuff I just want to do things so yeah. I sign me yeah. up let's do it cool when's this interview over with <laughs> <laughs> let's go I have a session open at six hey, we are hanging out with some professionals oh, here we are I mean I am just in awe the other ladies that there's there's five of you in the show mm-hmm and they in melody seems like she's the youngest she's in her 20s she is uh well she looks like she's in her 20s i won't reveal her age because i didn't ask that wasn't in her release i'm looking at her picture (laughs) yeah i'm looking at her picture she's the pop diva she is the pop diva and um she's kind of splitting the stage with that um with actually our pianist beth rainey who i think is in her 20s she is in all right Um, so they're both going to be kind of covering the pop um, so give can you give us an example of a pop song that she might tackle well the interesting if I know thing, <laughs> who is it that you said oh you were um sarah um oh borellis borellis yeah oh, so, she's okay. probably so, so, so oh, that's yeah. but that's probably going to be uh something that beth is is going to handle we we're, we actually reached out to melody because she writes her own music so she's oh, going to have original music that's yeah. nice yeah. And, okay, and her cool. original music is really um is really fun and edgy it's and authentic yeah it's mm-hmm. very authentic and and she's also going to be playing for herself so mm-hmm. so oh, cool it's it's, oh, she's it's one of those yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she's she's splitting. A, well and that's kind of what people will find when they come to the show is multi-talented someone's on the piano then yeah. someone's on guitar some you know in fact mm-hmm. um uh Robin Hamby plays guitar and accompanies herself as well. And um, okay. so it's kind of interesting. And she's the country diva. She is our con- Well, and she does it all, but we kind, okay. of, we kind of put her in the country slot. Um, and it's interesting, I think, that we have, like you said, the decades represented. And I lost where I was going with that again. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, well, it's it, all that, Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> it came back around quickly. <laughs> the... Um, Oh, God, now it went again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a riot. <laughs> so, it is a riot. So we have the decades, we have the genres. We have the, yeah, it, yeah and, there was and, some, something else related to that, but it'll float back. Keep talking. <laughs> that, that's funny. Well, I, I'm i so excited about um, just hearing the different songs from... We have covers. We have songs that you would know, but we also have a lot of original music. Mm-hmm. That's, That's right, where so, I was going. So, oh, right. A mix of covers yeah. and original. Because I, the main thing I really wanted to focus on was giving an opportunity to showcase women's authentic voice in music that they've written. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of bias in the music industry. Um, uh that doesn't, you know, we're writing obviously to markets with pop music a lot, but right. I wanted wanted there to be an opportunity for women to really tell it like it is 
and a little bit in North Idaho, mm -hmm. tell it like it is. Um, if I dare to go there a little bit, um, mm -hmm. opening up the platform for women, um, having a little more authentic voice. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So that was yeah. one of the, also the ideas. So we wanted, but we also wanted to do covers because mm -hmm. people love that. And sure. they're, when they hear somebody break We're out into one of them, they're going to oh, yeah. right. that song. Right. Yeah. yeah. So oh, we did a mix. Mm -hmm. We did a mix of tunes. Yeah. And oh. I think, I think that it, it is a, a really nice mix. But the other thing that we required was it had to have a feminine perspective. Mm -hmm. yes. And then once we had, this is how we're crafting the show. Once mm -hmm. we kind of had the songs down, then, she, you know, what Sandra's so brilliant at is really taking a look at the music itself and and making sure this song doesn't sound too much like this one. Sure. Where's the mm -hmm. placement going to go? Once she had placed everything, then the two of us really brainstormed on what's the narrative. Mm -hmm. Right. And once we had the opening and once we had the, the final song, we were able to create the narrative Weave that flows uh -huh. in between. Yeah. And I actually took some, so I'm very proud of you, so I'm going to brag on you. She has also written some, <laughs> okay. real, some yeah, <laughs> she, she has written some really good poetry that I was able to pull out and edit and actually use as some of our, our narrative oh, cool. in, the sh in the show. So it really is a, a very organic production mm -hmm. of these feminine perspectives right oh i'm excited this is going to be a great yeah, show it's very diverse yeah. and um and carol is doing some of uh, carol's an interesting gal we haven't talked oh, about love her carol. a lot she is uh a retired lapd officer oh so um and she shows music that reflects um her experience probably as well um so there's some diversity definitely with that mm -hmm. yeah and she mm -hmm. and it, this is kind of cute. The um, last rehearsal, she was singing one of her songs. She was rehearsing it, and my husband was there. And he just came up to me. He took me in his arms. And we just started dancing to oh. it. It, it. Her voice was just so kind of creamy, smooth. Mm, it was just yeah. this beautiful, mm. romantic moment. It was very special. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. So I'm sad to say I'm going to not be in town when the show happens. Um, and at this point, I'm ready to cancel that dang Well, I think you trip. should. I think you and should stay cancel here. the trip because <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime. It will never happen it's, again the same. Cape way Cod. unless it's paris if she's going to and well paris. it's cape cod but oh. maybe i can buy it's only cape cod it's, it's only cape cod. Cod. it's not paris Listen, ladies it's only cape cod <laughs> um all right well just a reminder um the show is saturday july 16th right here at the jacqueline arts and culture center mm -hmm. it opens at seven you can get your tickets at jacquelineartscenter.com com or you can search simple i think it's dot org the jack center yeah You're right it is um and simple ticks what and she simple said ticks, simple what ticks. she said yeah mm -hmm. or, or i'll be wearing a sandwich board probably the last week before the show <laughs> downtown on sherman so right you there you go right, those tickets, tickets. You'll find you it on right sherman, now. right um and if you and if people can't find it for any reason they can always call the Coeur Lane arts and culture alliance that's at right. the chamber mm -hmm. Coeur Lane chamber office and get through to ally and say how do i get those tickets again right, right? and we'll, awesome. we'll put links too in yeah our, but do it do it soon because I because if you if this has any interest for someone, get your tickets now. Yeah, you I know, agree. Because well, you, you girls are going to be picked up. Yeah. You're going to be yeah. picked up. You're going to be traveling to Paris. No, no time at oh, all. With this show. That's the plan. Somebody's <laughs> going to pick this up. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Our it, pleasure. This was we really, really appreciate it. What a fun yeah. little kitchen conversation. Indeed. about things now, that break out the I wine never thought I'd ever yes. <laughs> right I know right <laughs> no, thank you so much for having us yeah, much appreciated mm -hmm. much appreciated yeah. well, I'm looking forward to the show and I'm Allie and I'm not Callie I'm Marilee <laughs> and we we are the Arts, Arts and Culture, Culture Alliance. Alliance and whatever you do today make sure it's creative The Alley and Cali Artcast is a program of the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance and is sponsored by NIA, 
North Idaho Alliance, a woman-based leadership organization designed to inspire, uplift, and impact your community and lives. And Tubbs Coffee Roasters, globally sourced, locally roasted coffee. 